everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series, Philosophical Ponderings, where we take a look at 10 games of deep philosophical storyline or gameplay mechanics included within. Today we're taking a look at The Last Guardian, and I will say it was a very difficult decision whether to talk about this game, Ico, or Shadow of the Colossus, because Fumito Ueda's games are absolutely incredible, and they're something unlike anything else that we get in gaming. But in the end, I decided to show you guys The Last Guardian and talk about it, because it is my favorite of the three games, and I'll kind of explain to you guys why that is. But mechanically, as you open up, this older gentleman is telling the story in flashback, and he is the boy. And as you wake up, you realize you're not alone in this cave, but you're actually sharing the space with a large bird-slash-dog hybrid animal named Trico. And the premise of the game is, as you evolve and mature your relationship with this animal, you're able to solve more puzzles and do more things in the game. And I would definitely say that's a hallmark of Ueda's games, whether it's Ico or whether it's Shadow of the Colossus with your horse, each game you can't get through alone. You need a partner, you need a helper, and you basically forge this relationship with the animal or with the person to the point that you have a bond with this virtual character. And I think his games do a better job of creating that bond than any other game or designer of games that I've seen come before it. And if you own pets, you'll kind of understand how that bond with animals works. And if you don't, I'm sure you could guess at it. But Trico here, he's restrained, he has spears in his side, he's hungry, and off the top, he doesn't really trust you. And that's kind of how it is with animals or pets or even humans. When you first meet them, they don't know enough about you to actually formulate an opinion whether or not you're worth their time, whether or not you're trustworthy. And it's only through that mutual affection, taking care of each other, helping each other, that that bond's able to form. And that's what happens in all of Ueda's games. These bonds forge themselves to the point where you could never beat the game alone. You need these companion characters with you. And you'll see here the boy is removing a spear from Trico. And as the storyline progresses, he's going to do more and more things for the animal so that you're able to get to the end of the game together. One of the greatest things about The Last Guardian is the fact that we can actually play it because this game was rumored to be potentially canceled so many different times. They were having issues finishing the game and getting a lot of the mechanics working in it. And I will say that as a game, it is going to test your patience in a lot of different spots. Not unlike Ico or Shadow of the Colossus. The controls work up to a degree, but you're going to definitely take some unfair deaths or some unfair kickbacks in progress because the game is going to ask you to do something that it doesn't actually want to let you do. But more so, in a deeper layer, is actually your relationship with Trico. He's smart enough to know exactly what you're asking him to do at any given moment in time, but he's also intelligent enough to willfully ignore your commands. And if you've ever had a smart dog, I've had a corgi for 12 years, I will say that she knows exactly what I'm asking her to do at any given point in time, but she's intelligent enough to decide whether or not she actually feels like obeying that command. And Trico is going to give you the same difficulty. But maybe it's hiding a deficiency in the code, or maybe it really is coded in. And that's kind of a question that you have to answer for yourself. Is Trico's inability to understand and do what you want at any given moment in time a gameplay mechanic that they put in to emulate real animals? Or is it hiding a little bit of a coding issue? We're not quite sure, but I like to think that they actually had that forethought to make Trico willfully ignore you because he found something else more interesting or he wasn't in the mood to do what you asked for at that point in time. But same like with the Shadow of the Colossus or even Ico, you're able to climb. You can climb up on Trico here and in point in times you will fall even though you hit the right button or the game will decide the direction you thought you were going to jump wasn't the direction that it wanted you to jump. You're going to fight the camera. But outside of those mechanical issues, the story is so deep and engrossing and it feels so special that you're going to be able to look past those technical deficiencies at the game underneath it because once you ignore what the game's having slight technical issues with, you're going to love the world and love the story so much, at least in my opinion, that you'll forgive it. But as you can see here, your relationship with Trico has grown. You've fed him, you've tended to his wounds, and now the animal is more trusting in you because you've given it enough information about yourself for Trico to know that you're not a threat. You're actually beneficial to his survival, and your relationship will grow because of that. What I'll let you do is watch a little bit more of the opening because I think it does an extremely good job of kind of setting up the relationship between you and Trico before it even lets you get into the core gameplay mechanics and story. But just enjoy a little bit and I'll come back in just a second and talk more about 
The Last Guardian. But enjoy this little clip. What you saw right there is the first instance of not being able to progress in the game without Trico's help. And that's going to become one of the core gameplay mechanics in general, is that you're not able to beat this game alone. The same with Ico, the same with Shadow of the Colossus, you need help along the way. Which is kind of basically informing the human condition where no person, man or woman or otherwise, is an island amongst themselves. To be able to progress in life, to be able to get where you need to go or who you want to be, you do need help along the way. And those relationships that you form with your friends, with animals or otherwise, are going to better aid you in life to actually Get to where you need to be and obviously in a gameplay mechanic situation your relationship and the help of trico is going to let you better be able to complete the game because without your little dog bird buddy there you can't get to half of the spaces in the game what we've seen here is we just got this little shield that reflects light and that's going to be one of the other large gameplay mechanics because just like Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, there isn't a ton that you do in these games. The main goal is to progress forward. You know, there is some light combat, but it's mostly puzzle solving. It's mostly environmental solutions that you need to understand so you can physically progress from one area to the other. Now, granted, Shadow of the Colossus had more combat because you were fighting the Colossi, but even there, it's mostly just a puzzle as to how do you get onto them? How do you climb up to the weak spot? And how do you attack it? And that's what you see in this game as well. Now that we have this shield, it allows us to reflect a light. And what it's teaching us is at the other end of this area here, there's a destructible environment. And that light allows Trico to shoot electricity from his tail and destroy the wall in front of you. And you're going to have to understand what Trico can or can't destroy to be able to move further forward into the game. But as you come out of the cave into the main area of the game itself, You've already forged a deep and meaningful relationship with your companion, and you know that for the rest of the game, whatever you do, you need to protect them, not only because you actually have a care for them now, but you also, the game has told you, you need them to progress. So it's a great game design mechanic where it's given you kind of a personal relationship with the animal companion, and it's also taught you at the same time that as a mechanic, you need to keep this relationship strong so that you can actually progress, because without Trico, you will not be able to beat the game. I think that's really interesting because a lot of games have companion characters. You know, Resident Evil 5, you had Sheva, but the relationship aspect of it isn't formed very well. And then when they do actually ignore your commands or don't do what you want, you initially just want to hate them for it because the relationship's not strong enough for you to be like, oh, but it's Trico, I love him, he's a great dog bird, I'm going to let him have a little pass on this one. And you'll see here that he's afraid of water and he doesn't want to come down. So what you need to do, like with any animal or any relationship, is make the other person feel comfortable or give them an incentive to want to do what you'd like to do. So here we're going to find that we're able to break this chest open and get these blue barrels of food that we can then throw out into the water for Trico. And now all of a sudden he has an incentive to do something he's afraid of, kind of like in real life where maybe we want a new job or maybe we need to do something but we're fearful of taking the first step, but once we realize the good that could come from it, we're more willing to be able to take that risk, just like Trico did by jumping in the water here. And now as we ride up on his head, this cliff was too tall for us to scale, but now that we have our companion, we're able to free and clear, go ahead and progress. But I want you to see, and he shakes his hair there a little bit, just like a dog when he's wet. Watch this next little bit, and then I'll come back and close up the video on The Last Guardian, but this is a very nice moment that I want you guys to hear and see for yourselves.
イエダラセボイエクトユリイエノジエロテアオユクンヤアカスティアタトミコイエディアノケティアロイイニクRico just couldn't stay away from you. The bond that you've already formed is making him want to follow you. And you now see kind of the goal in the distance, which is at least at this point, the top of that tower. But that is The Last Guardian, an absolutely beautiful game. Definitely go out and play it. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Short of that, we'll be back on Friday with another episode as well as Sunday, and back on Tuesday, another episode in Philosophical Ponderings. But I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you could do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe. It takes us a lot of time to make each one of these videos. Short of that, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.